<laughs> I was taking a bite of that sandwich trying to avoid the big bun because there's too many carbs in that thing, you know? I lost 30 pounds. So I'm so glad to be with you. Are you all having a good convention? Because we've had a great eight years under President Obama, and uh, Secretary Clinton was definitely a part of that great eight years. I remember being on the steps of the Supreme Court twice. Uh, and the first time, you know, with the, uh, uh, the Prop 8 decision, the Windsor decision, I was with a, with a group of, of uh, gentlemen from some, I think the Washington uh, gay chorus. And we just broke in the song together. The whole crowd broke in the song. We were singing, God Bless America. And I sang, God Bless America, uh, like I've never sang, God Bless America, ever in my life. Like, I could, it could mean something deeper and more profound. Because I felt like I was an American. Uh, like no other time, that, I, that we had rights like everyone else, uh, and how profound that was. Um, but it, it's also sobering to know that people can get married in many parts of this country, post their pictures on Facebook, and then get up the next day and find out their employer has seen those photographs and then be fired, uh, and it could be completely legal. Uh, so there's an incomplete part of of our identity as citizens of this country, and we know we're moving in the right direction, and we know if we elect Hillary Clinton uh, and Tim Kaine uh, in November, that we'll continue on that path, and, and we can continue to work through the court system and continue to work in Congress to make sure that we, uh, that we pass the Equality Act, uh, that we make sure that kids uh, in schools are safe everywhere in this country. Uh, because their expectations have been raised about uh, about about uh, the prospects of, of living in this country, but uh, to to, under, to to think that that Donald Trump and the dark vision he's put forward, no matter what he said uh, about how he was going to protect, protect us, he still named Mike Pence as his vice presidential. Uh, nominee and and thank you go ahead and do that some more uh, this is a man this is a man who who cut HIV funding and then put that money that he cut from HIV funding uh, into gay conversion therapy or you know you know conversion therapy what kind of person does that uh, well horrible let's come up I'm a I'm a teacher, and I would, I'm a former teacher. I taught public school for 24 years, and we can, uh, we can play the, you know, what other adjectives, kids? Uh, horrible, cruel, inhumane, evil, ignorant. It is ignorant. I mean, um, the, it's, that's a profound, to take money from HIV uh, treatment and put it into gay conversion therapy. Uh, and to think what that means for that 13, 14, 15 year old that's put, subjected to that. Um, and some of you in this room you know, know someone or may have, uh, have been subjected to that and to, to be taught that fundamentally who you are is wrong is such a profoundly inhumane uh, thing. And that's who, that's who Donald Trump is named um, as his vice presidential candidate. Contrast that with the woman who, yeah, the woman, my God, the woman. Oh, woo! The woman who declared that LGBTQ rights are human rights. Um, let me try that again, because somebody wanted to clap for that. LGBT rights are human rights. There's all this thing about authenticity and people who fake and you know saying things for political. But is there any doubt who is the real deal, who is authentic and genuine, and who is the faker, who is the charlatan, who is the swindler, who is the the person? Trump University, what's up with that? You know. So look, 
there, we, we don't, there, the choice is very clear, and you know, all of our, you know, the log cabin, is there even really a log cabin these days? Who can pretend that, uh, that, you can, that anyone can support the Republican ticket? That Republican platform is a hot mess. Um, <laughs> it is a hot mess, a big hot mess. So look, are you ready to get out and do some work in November? I am, and look, you're looking at now the acting ranking member of the full Veterans Committee in the House of Representatives. How about that? And I see Aisha Mooney Mills, and that's what it means not to have just one or two uh, LGBT members of the House, but six LGBT members of the House, because now we're spread out all over the Congress, we're on all these different committees, and now somebody, I, I'm a full ranking, I'm a ranking member of a full committee. Uh, I control a staff, a committee staff now in the communication operations, and I go to the weekly meetings with Leader Pelosi. That, that was, you know, that is, uh, that is what we can position all, uh, and that means, look, it's not just one table that we sit at. There's the Judiciary Committee that, that David uh, Cicilline sits on, and he's moving the ball forward on the Equality Act. He also sits on the Foreign Affairs Committee. That's two tables, and there's all these subcommittees. We have a lot of tables to sit at in the Congress to move the ball forward, uh, and a lot of conversations to be a part of, and a lot of things we do for other members at those tables that they're gonna remember when it's time to say, this is important to us. Remember that thing I did for you at that table in the Judiciary Subcommittee? Remember that thing I did for you uh, in appropriations? It all begins to add up over time the favor bank, and when it's time to cash in for LGBT equality and to move our, our people forward, that is, I'm, paying, I'm trying to get you to understand what it means. It's not, we can't stop at six. We gotta elect more LGBT members to the House of Representatives. <laughs> and we need more ranking members. So look, I could go on for a long time, but I just wanna ask you that one question more time. Are we ready to fight in November? All right, we'll see you later. See you in November.